And once again, we welcome you to United in Liberty Radio, Dustin Harris and Joe Olivas. Uh, we're here to talk a little bit about principle, actually a lot about principle. We're here to talk about some things going on across the United States, apply them to the 12 principles of liberty, apply them to our lives and our families and everything that truly matters. And uh, gold uh, closed at 13.10 an ounce today. Joe, hi. Uh, how you doing? Uh, gold closed at uh, 13.10 an ounce today, Joe. I'm, I'm good. It's uh, it's good for a lot of people. It is good for a lot of people. I think once it gets closer to 1500, you're going to start hearing the, you know, we got, you know, the way to try to figure out a way to tax people that bought at 600, even though they haven't sold. You know, figure out a way to tax them. Did they already do that in the healthcare bill? Well, 1099s they, and they, they did do that. 600 they, bucks. They did do that. Wow. Well. And then and then when it gets closer to 2000, they'll 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 take it back from everybody again. You think? <laughs> I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, they've tried it once before. Uh, you know, it's, it's a way to get back at uh, Glenn Beck and Goldline because uh, they they artificially inflated the price of gold, right? I mean, they're fear mongering. That's that's what caused it all. It's not yeah. that the not not the economy's tanking and that the Fed is printing all kinds of money and the administration is spending all kinds of money and Congress is promising all kinds of money and our children uh, are owed a whole bunch of money, but. Well, that's why you learn how to cash. That's right. You get a shovel. That's right. Um, I spent some time in uh, the back country today, Joe. Put 250 miles on my car. Um, beautiful country, God's country. Glad to be in America. Um, but, uh, you know, as I was driving around, I read this story. As In fact, I happened to be in a very um, treacherous part of the road when I read this uh, story about the uh, killer cop that wants workers comp. Did you hear about this one? Uh n- Briefly, but uh, I'd like I'd love to hear the details of this one. <laughs> this comes out of uh, this comes out of Chicago area, uh, an Illinois state trooper who killed two teenage sisters in a high speed collision, driving at 126 miles per hour, while sending emails, speaking to his girlfriend on the cell phone, has filed a workers' compensation claim for injuries he said he sustained in the fatal crash. Wow. Shall I go on? (laughs) Matt Mitchell, who pleaded guilty to reckless homicide. Now, catch that. He pleaded guilty to reckless homicide and reckless driving. Could have thousands of taxpayer dollars coming to him, which angers the family of Kelly and Jessica Ewell, who were 18 and 13 respectively, when their vehicle was struck head-on by Mitchell's patrol car the day after Thanksgiving in 2007. At the beginning, he was a disgrace to his uniform. Now, I believe he is a disgrace to the human race, said Thomas O'Keefe, an attorney representing the girl's parents, Kimberly Shaul and Brian Ewell. The two, uh, the two girls, oh, excuse me, two other girls were passengers in the car were also injured. For two years after the accident, Mitchell was placed on paid leave. He continued his $68,000 annual salary. Mitchell pleaded guilty last year as part of a deal while uh, prosecutors were served 90 days probation, never seeing any jail time. Wait a minute. What kind of deal do you need to cut? I mean, uh, was there a question of whether or not he did it? Well, you know, honestly— Did the girls jump in front of the car? um, Doesn't say that, Joe. (laughs) On the day of the accident, Mitchell was responding at a triple-digit speeds to the scene of the incident at which troopers were already present. Okay, so in other words, this wasn't a this wasn't a high-speed chase, as you would think. He was coming to the scene of an accident where there were already troopers present, but he had to somehow go 126 miles per hour on his way. He's sending emails uh, and he's talking to his girlfriend on the phone. His car jumped the median, struck the car in which the girls were riding. Days after, he pled guilty in a criminal trial. Mitchell reassigned, resigned, excuse me, resigned from the force and denied any responsibility for the girl's death in a civil suit brought by the family against the state. This man has no shame, Keefe told ABCnews.com. 
He had no shame when he changed his story, and he insisted it was not, he was not responsible for the crash. And he continues to have no shame now. That's gall. Keefe said that because Mitchell was a state employee on the job at the time of the crash, the family civil case is tied up in a special court of claims, and a jury will never hear the case. Mitchell injured his legs in the crash, but the lawyer would not specify what treatment he needs or has already undergone. So let me set the scene, Joe. We've got a state trooper. He's on his way to the scene of a crash, uh, 126 miles per hour. He's uh, emailing, talking on the phone, jumps the median, 126 miles an hour, kills two girls, injures two others, and now he wants workers' comp. (laughs) Wow. Why do I bring this up? Uh, As our listeners know, I've talked incessantly about uh, texting while driving. I think we put a newsletter out with a a, uh, uh, column uh, regarding that. I have strong feelings about these texting while driving laws or, uh, you know, talking on your cell phone while driving or putting on your makeup while you're driving or whatever it is you do while you're driving. But as I was reading this story while I was driving today, the thought came to me, that uh, we've got this problem in the United States where we try to legislate everything that comes down the pipe. And here's the thing, Joe. In my opinion, the Founding Fathers, I think, set up a rule of law in which people should obey common courtesy, they should obey morality, they should do things that are right because they're right, but should they be against the law? That's a good question. It's something we could go into. I don't want to necessarily talk about the legality of morality here, but I do want to talk about um, the texting while driving or the predecessor to the actual crime. Do we prosecute the crime? Do we prosecute what happened before the crime? That's the question. Well, I mean, the fact that he was he was texting while driving, uh, you know, take that out of the equation altogether. Um, you know, I'm surprised that that this officer, um, you know, want, for one, was was being still on paid leave. I'm surprised that this individual feels himself not responsible for the accident. I don't care if you're a state employee. I don't care if you're a private citizen. I I don't care whether you're texting or not. If you're behind the wheel and your vehicle strikes another vehicle, it is your fault if you strike that person. If you strike that other vehicle, you know, so for this individual to go ahead and make it seem like uh, he has no responsibility. I mean, again, we talk about principles on a regular basis and principle number 10, all mankind are created with the ability to choose and each have responsibility for their own agency. It was his choice to put his foot on the, I mean, it was the scene of an accident and I hate to sound cold, but it was an accident. Nobody was going anywhere. The people were already, uh, I mean, the accident had already occurred. There were already troopers on the scene. So why does this officer feel the need to make his own choice and to go ahead and you know arrive at the scene in, at 120 plus miles an hour? Right. Well, that natural consequence it, it, or, or the natural result of, of that act is that you are at risk for an accident. And because he was the one that was behind the wheel and because an accident occurred and because deaths occurred as a result of his accident, he must accept responsibility for his own agency. And, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, whether he hurt his leg or not, I think the, you know, rightfully so, the parents of these uh, young girls feel like a lot more has been taken from them than uh, is ever taken from this individual with his uh, with his injuries uh, and and to find that taxpayers are now going to be responsible to pay workman's comp and um, individuals are going to be responsible to pay for those types of situations or those types of things be- as a result of this situation I think it's just ridiculous well the bottom line is I think this guy needs to be punished and I think he needs to be punished hard because here here's the question do we legislate the texting while driving do we legislate the makeup putting on while driving? Do we legislate this, that, and the other when it's really what occurs because of those things that's the problem? In other words, he was driving inattentively. Whether it was 126 miles per hour or not, he wasn't paying attention to what he was doing. I think there's no excuse for the the speeds that he was at. Uh, I I think there's obviously no excuse for being inattentive while you're driving, but...